Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Friday. And to so many of you out there who have already started your weekend, happy 4th of July weekend. We are getting closer here. Thanks for being with us on GMSA at 9 this morning. We are going to start with uh, a warning that you probably never thought you were going to have to hear. Mm. But it is 2020. Some of the things that we go through these, and we have a lot of warnings. We have to tell people a lot of sure. things. Never have I thought I would have to tell people don't use hand sanitizer right before you work fireworks. But that is happening this mm -hmm. year. So uh, the Greensboro Fire Department, this is in North Carolina, they put out a warning on their Facebook page saying, keep in mind if you're using consumer fireworks this year, in all caps, do not use hand sanitizer at the same time. Wash your hands only with soap and water. Hand sanitizer is flammable. Of course, mm -hmm. we're all using hand sanitizer like crazy this year. I bet it's something that nobody really ever thought of before. No, but you should be using hand sanitizer. You we don't want to tell you not it. to. Absolutely. However, if you are setting off fireworks, mm -hmm. not in San Antonio city limits, of course, because that's illegal. Right. But if you are setting off any fireworks, I would imagine especially using sparklers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, don't be using hand sanitizer right before that. Could there were some bad. crazy numbers in this article. On average, 180 people go to the emergency room every day with fireworks related injuries in the month around 4th of July. I didn't think that was a lot. hundred. I mean, we alone see a lot of injuries here yeah. in our local emergency rooms. And then I went to the next paragraph. Last year alone, fireworks were involved in roughly 10,000 injuries treated in hospital emergency rooms around the country. 58% of those burns. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you know, like you said, we all need to be using that hand sanitizer. So on the one hand, no pun intended, uh, make sure your hands are clean, but also be careful with the fireworks. And when you are using the hand sanitizer, it's got to be at least 60% alcohol. Hence the issue if it's around any open flames. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at your morning rundown. may have said it best. The coronavirus is a Category 6 hurricane and we cannot evacuate. The CDC is now forecasting up to 160,000 deaths in the U.S. by July 25th. That's only three weeks away. Fireworks will light up the sky in some cities this 4th of July weekend, but COVID-19 is still in the air and contagious. I hope we don't have a reprise of what happened on Memorial Day. One of Guillen's co-workers, Army Specialist Aaron Robinson, attacked Guillen with a hammer before moving her body and then allegedly confessed to his married girlfriend, Cicely Aguilar. According to a criminal complaint, Aguilar helped Robinson dispose of Guillen's body before dismembering her. The FBI arresting Jeffrey Epstein's longtime associate, Glenn Maxwell. The British socialite has been charged with helping to recruit underage girls for the convicted sex offender. Layoffs persistently high. For the 15th straight week, more than 1 million Americans have filed new claims for unemployment benefits. More than 19,000 voters have cast a ballot in a runoff election for Bear County. More than 10,000 voters, Democrats, more than 8,000 Republicans. And you can still cast your ballot. Early voting will continue through next Friday, July 10th. Election Day is July 14th. Good evening, I'm Hugh Downs, and this is 2020. For more than 20 years, he was the reassuring voice of Friday night. Kobe Bryant, the new cover of the upcoming NBA 2K21 games. They'll be called the Mamba Forever Editions, one version coming out in September. The others are for the holidays. Walmart is putting some of its parking lots to good use. The company says 160 lots across the country will be transformed into theaters, offering a socially distanced night of entertainment. The plan is to show films through October. Waterburger rolling out a new look, more capacity for fryers and new models. And we have that full article right now. Just head to KSAT.com. <laughs> I thought the Whataburger idea was a pretty mm -hmm. neat one, but I checked out their website. No locations yet. Okay. So we got to stay tuned for that one. And we talked about that a little on GMSA. What is your go-to Whataburger order? Oh, oh, I, I said I meant Walmart, the Walmart location. Oh, okay. Or the uh, <laughs> drive-thru. Y'all have been up since who knows when. <laughs> um, anyway, Whataburger go-to order. It mm -hmm. is uh, the chicken tenders, Texas toast, gravy, Diet Dr. Pepper. Justin Horn. <laughs> we talked about this earlier yeah. this morning. Yeah, we're going to get to the forecast in a bit, but really the, the main point of this forecast, what is your Whataburger go-to? <laughs> what is my go-to? Yeah. It's it's the number one with number cheese, one. obviously. Okay. And uh, no onions. you got to lose the onions. Okay. Uh, but no, the burger's perfect. Good stuff. They really are. Yeah. Okay. Got to get Max's order here in a second. I know, for sure. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at the 4th of July forecast. 
Uh, we're expecting temperatures to be up near 100 on Saturday. Always got to dodge that. Uh, hey, I didn't put any on hand sanitizer. Whoa. <laughs> so we're good. Uh, sunny skies, low humidity on Saturday. Be careful out there if you're going to be shooting off fireworks. Obviously, outside city limits, all that fun stuff. But uh, the forecast is going to be a hot one. That's the bottom line. And uh, hopefully everybody has a safe weekend. There's a look at the numbers right now. 79 at the airport. 73 Bernie State, 75 Comfort, 74 Bandera. We do have a little bit of morning cloud cover out there, but it'll fade away pretty quickly and we'll get plenty of sun later today. This is the forecast heat index. We're basically in the same boat we were yesterday. Dew points come down a little bit in the afternoon. It'll feel like it's about 100 degrees in most spots, uh, even here around San Antonio with uh, mostly sunny skies, I think. Uh, there's a look at the uh, hourly, hourly forecast here. A little hazy today, too, because we do still have some of that dust in the atmosphere. Southerly winds 5 to 15. Temperatures do creep up a little bit, so we are talking triple digits this weekend. Maybe some rain chances next week. We'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. Guys? All right. Thank you, Justin. My order, honey chicken biscuit. Honey butter chicken biscuit. There you, you go. You cannot go wrong with that. used to that. love the spicy jelly, too. Just like added that little... You did ask me this uh, morning if they still have that, and I don't know is my mm. answer. We're going to have to find out. Maybe with the new designs, they'll bring it back. <laughs> There you go. All right, taking a look at your box. That's what you need. <laughs> Take a look at the roadways. Speaking of roadways, everything looks clear out there. We actually heard from Officer Nick Solis this morning. He had the whole menu memorized. He really did. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, can you blame him? But so far, we're talking about Whataburger because the roads look just fine out there. Let's move on to top stories we are following today. Investigators are trying to figure out what started a house fire early this morning. More than a dozen San Antonio fire crews responding to the flames just south of downtown. All this happening around 430 this morning. Fire officials say this was the 200 block of Pendleton. Firefighters found smoke and flames burning through the back room of this home into the attic. But what made it even more difficult to put the fire out was there were numerous items blocking access. Arson called out to investigate the scene, trying to figure out how exactly this happened. The home determined inhabitable because of the significant damage. Now to the latest in the coronavirus pandemic here in San Antonio. Governor Greg Abbott issuing a statewide order that requires Texans to wear face masks in public spaces due to the recent spike in COVID-19 cases. That order officially going into effect at midnight. The face coverings must be worn over the mouth and nose in all counties that have 20 or more cases. The majority of Texas is 254 counties meet that threshold. Governor Abbott also giving mayors and county judges the authority to impose bans on outdoor gatherings of more than 10 people with some exceptions. And Bear County clearly one of those counties that meet the threshold. In the latest report, we saw 374 more confirmed COVID-19 cases just yesterday. A new total here, 12,878. And four more people have died, bringing that total now to 115 people. The number of recoveries has increased to more than 5,100, but there are still 7,600 people right now who are fighting this illness. Hospital capacity, meanwhile, it is down to 13%. That means there are only 574 staffed beds available. That's a big change compared to the day before when it was a 27%. Hospital beds at BAMC and the VA hospital no longer included in the hospital ca capacity calculation since they're military hospitals, so not everyone can be treated there. Meanwhile, some local hospitals now using pediatric ICUs to make space for those incoming patients. And as a reminder, the coronavirus testing site at pre-K 4SA West, it has been canceled. But the walk-up testing site at Kazen Middle School will continue to be up and running from 10 this morning to 2 in the afternoon. 300 free tests will be conducted. This is on Gillette Boulevard. The walk-up testing site will also be up and running Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday from 10 to 2 p.m. as well. And be sure to tune into the news at noon today. We're going to have a live interview with Governor Greg Abbott. All of this coming after the large surge of cases here in Texas and San Antonio. Governor Abbott said to answer questions about the coronavirus and the latest on the executive order he recently issued. Live interview again happening during our KSAT News at Noon. Make sure to tune in, get that latest updated information. And in your morning headlines, Latin America and the Caribbean seeing devastating unemployment numbers as a result of this pandemic. The International Labor Organization warned that 41 million people could be left without a job. Before the pandemic, around 26 million people were unemployed in the region. But data published in the ILO's latest report suggests the unemployment rate could rise between 4 and 5 percent.
The United Kingdom is removing a 14 day quarantine rule from about 60 countries for people arriving to that region. These countries include France, Spain, Germany and Italy. They are deemed lower risk for coronavirus right now as the rates have decreased in those countries. The United States, however, is not on this latest list. The change is expected to take effect July 10th, over a month after the UK started the mandatory 14 day quarantine for all visitors. And in New York, community members and artists coming together, painting a Black Lives Matter mural on the streets of downtown New York City. So take a look. This is outside of the Federal Plaza, the headquarters of the Trump administration in New York City. It is also next to the Thurman Marshall or Thurgood Marshall Federal Supreme Courthouse. Each word provided to an upcoming black artist or muralist. It's kind of like this, this cycle of um, not so great things that happen in this area. And so I think the mural is a very strong and powerful contrast and combats the oppression of some of these buildings and some of the things that have happened in these buildings historically. This is just one of the hundreds of murals that have been painted in cities across America during this civil movement. It is 9.09 on your Friday morning, 79 degrees out there. All right, still ahead on GMSA at 9, a hot air balloon designed to lift you up in a pressurized capsule. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, the new technology a company in Florida is still working on. And a woman recovering in the hospital after she had a dangerous encounter with a bison all caught on camera. That story's still ahead on GMSA at 9. And a local social worker writing a children's book helping kids understand more about germs. Alicia Herrera joining us live, telling us about the new I Know About Germs book. That's right after the break. Welcome back. It is just about 9.13 on your Friday morning. A local licensed clinical worker decided to write a children's book after she noticed her own son getting really anxious due to the changes this pandemic has caused. The book titled I Know About Germs was created to empower kids with knowledge about the virus. Lisa Barra joining us live near downtown with the author. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, this is the beautiful cover of that book. It's a children's book, really short, short and sweet, and it talks all about germs, of course, um, focusing on the coronavirus. So with me, the author, Teddy McVeigh. Good morning. Good morning. So what were some of the first questions that your four-year-old son, Dax, had? Well, the first thing he wanted to know was if he was sick. And then once he realized he wasn't sick, he wanted to know if his family was sick or his friends were sick. He was really concerned that people he loved were going to get sick. And for some parents, it's hard to break down the coronavirus. And so you try to do it in terms that he would understand. And you ended up coming up with this book. So you have a page uh, chosen out for us. Could you sure. read a little bit for it? With new viruses, we have to be super careful to keep everyone safe and healthy. We can't let a new virus try any of its favorite tricks, like the spread trick. Some germs can spread from person to person all over the world. And so here we see that um, you can actually see, we don't mention coronavirus in the book, but the illustrations do show that. And you mentioned that you wanted to keep this general for parents. Correct, yeah, I wanted it to be something that parents could use as a tool throughout the span of the pandemic. And as we know, month to month, things are changing, but then also be a tool that could help parents still post pandemic. So it discusses immune system and germs in general terms, but still very much so um, gives a foundation for parents to launch onto those more, more specific items like the pandemic or the novel coronavirus. And so there are options for parents if they want to purchase the hard book, but also you have an ebook option. Yeah, so we have an ebook option and a paper, paperback option available on Amazon. Perfect. And you guys, I just want to show you these. It started with a book and now it's just expanded for her son, Dax, with all the tools, supplies here because he says what? I know all about germs. Yeah, I know all about science. And so for him, we're building on this empowerment of learning more and more about science as opposed to being more and more scared about germs. So hopefully your kids can jump on board with that too. All right. So there you have it, you guys, a local author here writing this book. So it's a good way for kids to learn and feel perhaps a little bit more comfortable when they step outside. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSA 12 News. All right, Alicia, thank you. I feel like that's something we could all use more mm. and more understanding and less fear. Yeah, she said her right? son had some anxiety. I have some anxiety. We all do. I think, we, yeah, I think you're totally right. Justin, I mean, you've got little ones. It's yeah. it's tough explaining what's going on right now. It's a tough conversation. It, it's, it's hard for them to comprehend all of it. But yeah. This is where we are. It's hard for, as you guys said, for all yeah, of us to comprehend to what's it. going on. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's bring some happiness in here before okay. we uh, <laughs> jump into uh, the forecast real quick. We've got a junior meteorologist to thank. Oh, nice. Maybe, maybe not. 
<laughs> okay, uh, this is Savina, and uh, she says she checked the weather outside and decided it was a hot day. Indeed it was. Take a listen. Hot and sunny. Are there any clouds? No, there's no clouds. So it's just hot? Yes. Why are the, the leaves moving? Because it's windy. <laughs> she did better than I did. She nailed it. I mean, let's be Hot honest. Hot sunny. Yeah. Spot on. We are in the doldrums of summer. Great job. Thank you so much. I, I love listening to those kiddos give the forecast, and we've got some more coming up next week. Let's talk about the dust right now. Uh, we do have Soma out there, and I know this has been a big topic of conversation. It is going to be a little bit hazy today. We're seeing sort of another plume move through. It starts to dissipate tomorrow, and I think really as we get into Sunday, you'll see it sort of disappear. And as we look farther out into the Atlantic, there are some more plumes headed into the Caribbean, but maybe not necessarily in our direction. I'm hoping we're going to get a break from this dust for a while and uh, we can see our allergies sort of come down a little bit. Uh, but that is what we're dealing with right now. There is some dust out there. Meantime, interesting this morning, the aquifer dropped below 660 feet. What does that mean? Well, it's sort of a, a big number because once you have a 10 day rolling average below 660 feet, we're talking restrictions here. And the aquifer has not been below that number since uh, September of 2018. So we dropped eight tenths of a foot, 659.6. That's as of this morning. The average is 660.3, so we're now just a little bit below the average. And the 10 day average is it's still at 661.1, but it is dropping. And so we'll see what happens as we go into next week. But uh, just we've sort of hit a dry spell here and the aquifer is taking a hit outside right now. We've got some morning cloud cover 79 degrees. Dew point is at 69 south southwesterly winds at about eight feels like 82 right now when you factor in the humidity. Visible satellite picture shows we do have some clouds stretching from Dallas down to San Antonio, but no rain in those clouds. All the rain is outside of this ridge of high pressure, so you will find some storms out in Louisiana and parts of Arkansas, but just not here in the Lone Star State. And you look a little closer here around San Antonio, yeah, we've got some morning clouds. These aren't going to last very long, so you can expect lots of sun this afternoon. And of course, those hot temperatures, 79 Hello to 76 Rio Medina, 79 right now. Divine, we are in the 80s now in Pleasanton and, and Katula, 81 degrees there, 83 right now in Victoria. Two points just like yesterday. They're going to start off pretty high, but they'll come down some during the afternoon. So that takes the edge off a little bit when we're talking about the heat index. But hot is hot when you got temperatures in the upper 90s, close to 100. It's just there's no way around it. It's going to be hot for the next couple of days. Uh, 99, the forecast heat index here in San Antonio this afternoon. We'll see some triple digits for sure around the area. And here's the future gas. So uh, high pressure does shift off to the west a little bit as we get to later into the week and then into next week. That may allow for some showers to develop. This is Monday at 5 o'clock. And we do see a little bit of isolated activity right now. I'd say it's about a 10 to 20% chance at best. That'll be the case Tuesday too. Some isolated stuff. Best chances will be east of San Antonio. And then uh, that little disturbance that helps to kick up some of those showers moves away and high pressure moves back in next week, which means more heat, more dry weather. Uh, 99 degrees today. Heat index anywhere from 99 to 101. We'll go 100 tomorrow, 101 Sunday, 98 Monday, 10% chance of rain, 20% chance on Tuesday. And that does bring temperatures down a little bit. We'll keep our fingers crossed that we can at least get a few raindrops in the old rain bucket next week. You Just know, to be clear, you're yeah. calling 97 a cool down. I, well, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, Technically you know, speaking. This time of year, 97 <laughs> looks pretty good. Yeah, we'll take it. All right, thanks, Justin. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, a woman recovering after a dangerous encounter with a bison and a unique coronavirus safety PSA released in New York. More details next in today's Take a Look at This. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Friday. A surreal brush with nature turning into quite a frightening incident all caught on camera. CNN's Jeremy Roth has that story and more in today's Take a Look at This. A 72-year-old woman is recovering after being gored by a bison in Wyoming. The frightening incident was caught on camera at Yellowstone National Park. The Larson family saw it happen and say the woman, who was trying to get a photo, repeatedly provoked the animal. 
I could hear the bison making noises and like blowing steam out and I mean it was just an accident waiting to happen at that point. They say the bison charged the woman, striking her twice and knocking her unconscious. She was airlifted to a hospital where she was treated and released. Many signs posted inside Yellowstone warn visitors not to approach wildlife. If you don't bug them, they're not going to bug you. Like that's where they live and we need people need to be respectful of that. Another close call, this one in New York, where one person escaped with only minor injuries after a three-story building collapsed in Brooklyn, leaving the streets filled with dust and debris. The building was having exterior work done that had to be halted after some structural issues were discovered. The official cause of the incident is still under investigation. Finally, a unique coronavirus safety PSA released in New York is advocating mask wearing by using a famous, or should I say infamous, mask wearer. The quirky spot stars Friday the 13th villain Jason Voorhees, who's trying to fit in with others by donning a new kind of mask. The premise is silly, but the message is clear. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Hot air balloons getting an upgrade, a big one. A company in Florida is making a high-tech hot air balloon called Spaceship Neptune. The balloon can transport a pilot and eight people in a pressurized capsule suspended from an enormous blimp. The company is scheduled a test flight for early 2021, but it will not carry any crew. The company hopes to start taking space tourists in a few years. Wow, the ride would go 100,000 feet up in wow. the air, last six hours. And if you're interested in joining as a passenger, you can reserve a seat, but be advised, it's going to cost you. The prices are sky high. People can expect to pay around $125,000 per ticket. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's, it's like if Tesla decided to do hot air balloons. <laughs> yeah. A new study says that eating black raspberries might reduce inflammation associated with skin allergies. Researchers put a group of mice on a diet equivalent to eating a single serving per day of black raspberries for humans. They found that swelling went down compared to the mice that did not eat black raspberries. According to researchers, that means a diet high in black raspberries reduce inflammation from contact sensitivity. Hmm. You ever heard of black raspberries? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I got nothing. Either. No, me either. Okay, apparently they're good for you. A yearly event that has a special place for all of us here at KSAT, the Head for the Cure 5K, is an event we participate in to honor our former news director, Jim Boyle. Jim passed away from brain cancer in 2014. Because of this pandemic, this year's event will be virtual, a virtual 5K on September 26th. The event will take place on Facebook Live and YouTube to share stories from survivors. And you can participate as well. We have a link to register right now, ksat.com. Those who sign up, you can run, walk, bike, or do any sort of physical activity of your choosing. Just have to post a picture on Facebook and tag Head for the Cure. Foundation right now offering a one-time discount code as we head into Independence Day. Just enter July 4 to get that discount, and that code will expire on Monday. We want to clarify a report earlier that the governor's statewide mask mandate went into effect at midnight. It actually goes into effect today, this afternoon at 12.01. And that new mandate requires Texans to wear face masks in public spaces because of the surge in the pandemic. Now, the face coverings must be worn over the mouth and nose in all counties that have 20 or more cases. The majority of Texas' 254 counties meet that threshold. Governor Abbott has also given mayors and county judges the authority to impose bans on outdoor gatherings of more than 10 people with some exceptions. We actually have an interesting article on our website right now that really explains what that mandate means. So you can check that out. All right, time now, 927, 79 degrees out. A lot more ahead on GMSA at nine with the recent uptick in coronavirus cases here locally. Some hospitals the reaching capacity after the break. We'll take a look at CNN's Miguel Marquez's up close and personal look into Methodist Hospital's COVID unit right here in San Antonio. You don't want to miss that. Well, in the aftermath of 374 new confirmed cases of COVID-19, the total for Bear County sitting at 12,870. But it's not just a rise in cases we're seeing. We're also seeing that rise in hospitalizations. San Antonio hospitals are now inching closer to meeting capacity. CNN's Miguel Marquez gives us an inside look at what our local health care workers are facing. 
Everyone good? San Antonio Methodist Hospital. The lungs of a 29-year-old badly damaged by the coronavirus need a CAT scan. A patient so critically ill, what should be easy, takes enormous coordination and a small army just to get them from A to B. We are having an explosion of COVID. We aren't overrun yet, but it's overwhelming. Overwhelming now and expected to get worse in the days ahead. San Antonio's Bear County has seen a sharp rise in the percent of those testing positive for the virus. In just the last 30 days, the weekly average of those testing positive has gone from 3.6% to more than 20%. So many infections, increasingly moms-to-be infected with the coronavirus. Methodist Hospital now has a dedicated unit in its NICU for babies born to mothers who have it. That picture that every mom wants of the baby being born and holding the baby, does that happen with babies in, in COVID? Um, unfortunately, no. We have to, as soon as the baby is born, they do bring them right to us outside of the door. So it's just a very brief moment that the mom might get a glimpse. In the womb, the virus isn't typically transmitted from mother to child, but during the birthing process, the risk of infection goes up and treating newborns with the coronavirus, much more complicated. Though these babies have tested negative, they are treated as suspect positive. Healthcare workers wear full PPE, and these babies born to moms with the coronavirus are kept separated from others just in case. So you have five babies in here right now? Yes. You have room for 16? Yes. Do you think you're going to be full up? Uh, I do. The way things are going, we're admitting pretty frequently, yes. 9683. Christy Labasida, only 36 years old, is expecting her fourth child. Both she and her fiancé have the coronavirus. Mainly the thing that really hurt was my bones were just, I couldn't lay down. It was just hurting. Your, your bones? My bones. It like just, your entire skeleton, like my your body. Whole enti yeah, even to my pinky of my toes. Pregnancy hard enough without that. She took precautions and isn't sure how she got it. Now only hoping she recovers and she, her three kids and fiance are coronavirus free by the time she gives birth in about a month. I'm extremely stressed. I am a very strong woman. I tend to do a lot. And now that I can't and I need that help, it's... It's taking a toll. Methodist Hospital may be seeing the beginning of a sharp increase nationwide of moms with coronavirus giving birth. There's actually some literature out there to support up to a 30% asymptomatic rate. So 30%? that means 30% asymptomatic rate. Of, of moms coming in? Of moms coming in. Pregnancy and coronavirus, only one piece of the pandemic. Methodist Hospital treating a rising tide of critically sick patients. The last few weeks has just been overwhelming, is how I would describe it. There's been more and more patients than we really know what to do with. The patients are getting younger, and they're more sick. And how much younger? It's gone from, you know, probably 50s and 60s for the first wave to, I've lost track of how many 20 people in their 20s. This is Methodist's COVID Unit 2. It's one of three specialized COVID units at the hospital. Patient rooms sealed off, each one turned into negative pressure chambers, so staff only need to don PPE if they go into one of the bays. So you have 14 rooms, how many are filled? 14. Wow. With a waiting list. How long is that list? It's long. The hospital is creating more beds, but for now, this is where the sickest of the sick are treated. Well, yesterday was probably one of my worst days that I've ever had. And Why? I got 10 calls, all of whom young people who otherwise would be excellent candidates to be able to put on ECMO. If they, they're so sick that if they don't get put on, they don't get that support, they're probably going to die. I had three beds. And just in making that decision, being able to figure out who who really is going to benefit, it it is a level of uh, decision making that I I don't think uh, a lot of us are prepared for. Those calls coming from other hospitals across South Texas with patients so sick that Methodist may be their last hope. Methodist Hospital uses a procedure to oxygenate the blood and keep patients off ventilators. It's called ECMO, or extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. 
Today, Dr. De La Volpe is inserting large tubes in the veins of a 33-year-old. They run from the groin all the way to the heart. The blood comes out of the body, is mechanically oxygenated, then returned back to the heart almost immediately. The Methodist team have had a lot of practice, the procedure taking only a few minutes. It involves being able to take uh, large cannulas. They're, they're almost like small, small garden hoses, is how I would describe them. They have to be able to pump about two, two or three gallons of blood uh, uh, per minute uh, through them. So. One, one is draining blood out and the other one is returned. The blood coming out of the patient is dark. It just looks unhealthy. The blood returning is bright red, loaded with oxygen. Almost immediately, oxygen level in the patient's blood goes back to near normal. Their chance of survival now better than if they were on a ventilator. I think the ventilator really causes a lot of harm. And we're, we're finding that it causes harm in general, but it certainly causes harm when we're talking about patients with COVID. Because their lungs are so weak to begin with? Because their lungs are so weak and because probably there's other reasons why patients are having trouble. The ventilator's pushing oxygen into the lungs. That's right. Into damaged lungs. That's right. So not only are you having all of the problems with the blood vessels and the clotting in, in your blood vessels, not only are you having all of the problems of oxygen not being able to get to your organs and your organs shutting down from that, but now you're artificially pushing air into your lungs and causing more damage that way. Another hard lesson of the pandemic and a virus healthcare providers everywhere are still struggling to understand. We don't quite understand why one person um, with lab values of X does well, while a person with lab values that appear to be better doesn't make it. And a mask is not a big ask to help save your life. The work and stress for healthcare workers everywhere, crushing and with rates of infection rising, they expect more work and stress ahead. Stressful for patients as well who are sick, isolated from everyone. How tough is it to be in your room all day just sitting there? Oh man, uh, if you could just hear that unit in the room, it would drive you nuts at first, but you get past it. 28-year-old Michael Vasquez works in a warehouse. He isn't sure how he got sick. He's part of a new program here to get patients up and walking as soon as possible, even a little bit, helping both physically and mentally. What has it done to your lungs? It um, really made them fatigue really bad. With the... Uh, sorry. Um... <clears throat> Vasquez isn't sure if there will be any long-term effects to his lungs. Right now, he's focused on getting home to his wife and seven-year-old son. I just miss, you know, their, their presence, their, um, you know, miss holding your wife, kissing your son goodnight, going to his room, making sure he's okay. I miss that a lot. We know that when people walk, when people sleep better, when people see bright light, they get better sooner. We know all of this. I think on some level, we're having to relearn it with COVID because of our response to it. You know, obviously our need to keep ourselves safe, to keep staff safe. So it's not unexpected that we kind of ended up isolating people, whether we meant to or not. Another lesson of the pandemic, trying to reduce recovery times and free up beds. Badly needed for an expected growing surge of people seriously sick with the coronavirus. Right now, we are so full upstairs that we are having some delays in getting the patients upstairs because there just aren't beds that are prepared and ready for, for COVID patients. Right. So we are, we are holding a lot of them in the emergency department right now, um, some for hours, some for days. What's driving the surge here? Doctors aren't entirely sure, but based on what they hear from patients, there was a sense that the worst was behind us. I don't think that there was one specific incident that really led to this spike. I think people after March and April were extremely frustrated with being inside and as soon as those restrictions lifted, they wanted to get out. Some protected themselves, some didn't. Um, and, and now we're just seeing the result of that. With the holiday weekend coming up, the fear now, the surge of patience will become a tidal wave. I don't think I have seen anything like this ever. And I would say that if you want to see August 1st, then maybe you should stay indoors and isolate on July 4th. All of that happening right here in San Antonio at Methodist Hospital. That report from CNN's Miguel Marquez. There was a lot to unpack there, a lot to unfold. What was the biggest yeah. thing that jumped out to you? Uh, just the fact that, uh, just how stressed the hospitals are. I mean, of course, and then the 
the fact that there are moms coming in who are having babies that they cannot see because they are testing positive for the virus. And you can just see the, the look of, um, of fear and of you know, exhaustion on the frontline workers' faces. Yeah. yeah. Wear a mask. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Weather is up next. Welcome back. Let's take a look outside with live cam right now. A lot of clouds out there, but we are heading toward, oh, probably a very hot weekend. All right, Justin, are we going to see those triple digits? It's looking that way. Yeah, we, we really tried to avoid them. We really did, but uh, I think it's looking more and more likely that we're going to hit 100 degrees tomorrow, even Sunday, maybe dropping down a little bit next week into the upper 90s. Big win. <laughs> Look for the positives in the forecast. Uh, radar right now. Uh, doesn't show us a whole lot. You got high pressure and control over Texas, and that really takes everything uh, away from us precipitation wise, pushes everything up and around. So you got some storms uh, around parts of Arkansas and Louisiana this morning around New Orleans, and then a little bit of stuff out in the mountains, New Mexico, uh, out into Mexico, but just nothing here in Texas, and it looks like things are going to stay pretty quiet. The water vapor tells the same story here. You can kind of see our ridge pipe pressure and where it is right now. Unfortunately, there's still a little bit of moisture at the surface and that uh, allows for some heat index values and you get that humidity and yeah, at least the humidity will fall off a bit this afternoon. Let's talk about July 4th climatology. Uh, warmest we've ever seen on July 4th was 104. That was back in 1894. Yes, they did keep records back then. Uh, otherwise, recently 103 back in 2009. Coolest high temperature, 82 back in 2007. That sounds nice. We won't be there. Uh, most rainfall we've ever seen on July 4th, nearly two inches in 2003. But like most July 4ths, uh, this one's going to be a dry one. Uh, outside right now, we've got some morning cloudiness. It's already starting to fade away. 79 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 69. South southwesterly winds at about 8. Heat index is up to 82 now. And you can see those ripples there of clouds. And they're already starting to sort of disappear. So that's why I think we'll see sunny skies later today. Temperature 75 Bernie Stage, 81 New Braunfels, 79 in Hondo, 81 Creso Springs, 81 right now in Catula. And dew points. Well, it's, it's good to see that we're in the 60s, considering we've been in the 70s for several days now. Dew points in the 70s elsewhere, yes. But uh, these numbers should fall off into the lower 60s this afternoon, especially San Antonio up into the hill country. And that just makes it feel a little bit better. Not much, but a little bit. And as we look forward in the forecast here, high pressure does slide off to the west. Uh, we're still going to see hot temperatures this weekend, that's for sure. But as we get into Monday, that may allow for a little disturbance to roll through. This model looks pretty active. It will not be this active, but I think we could see some isolated showers and storms Monday. Best chance will be closer to the coast. That'll be the case Tuesday too. Tuesday, just looking at the models this morning, I think is probably our best chance, but even then we're talking 20% here. So it'll be hit or miss. It's not going to be a drop buster by any stretch of the imagination. And then by Thursday, high pressure starts to build back in. And I think we're going to see some awful warm temperatures by the end of next week. Uh, forecast for today, 99 degrees heat index anywhere from 99 to 101. It is going to be a little bit hazy. We still have some of that dust out there that's showing up. Uh, it should start to dissipate tomorrow. 100 on your Saturday, 101 Sunday. We'll be at 98 Monday, 10% chance of rain and a 20% chance of some showers and storms on Tuesday. We'll be right back. Welcome back from the rise in coronavirus cases here in San Antonio to a warning about a potentially poisonous hand sanitizer. Here's today's nine at nine. Bear County saw hundreds of COVID-19 cases added in this latest report for a new total of 12,878. The death toll has increased by four to a total of 115 people. The number of recoveries is up to more than 5,100, but there are still 7,600 people fighting the illness. And in Texas, the governor reversing course, now mandating masks after one third of the state reported a record number of new cases Thursday. COVID-19 is not going away. In fact, it's getting worse. Now more than ever, action by everyone is needed. If you turn your back on the virus, if you turn your back on science, it's gonna bite you. And that's what's happening in most of the US where we're seeing increases. Johns Hopkins University reports more than 2.7 million confirmed cases in the US and counting. 
The San Antonio River Authority is temporarily closing some of its parks along with some large gathering areas along the river to help reduce crowds and hopefully stop the spread of COVID-19. President Trump kicking off his Independence Day weekend with fireworks tonight at Mount Rushmore. No social distancing is expected, prompting fears the event could act as a super spreader for COVID-19. The Food and Drug Administration has issued a warning over a potentially poisonous ingredient found in some hand sanitizers. Some hand sanitizer products could be contaminated with methanol, which can be life-threatening if ingested. It can also be toxic if absorbed through the skin. A law enforcement source says that eight Secret Service agents initially assigned to Vice President Mike Pence's recent trip to Arizona, eight of them testing positive for COVID-19. The positive test reportedly forced a one-day delay so the Secret Service could swap in healthy agents. Apple now closing down more of its stores that were just recently reopened. About 30 more of the company's stores have had to close again because of this recent surge in COVID cases. In all, about 77 stores shutting down. No word on when they're going to reopen. Google's got a fight on its hands. The company is trying to complete its purchase of Fitbit, the maker of fitness trackers, but 20 advocacy groups from around the world are demanding regulators block the deal. They claim it would hurt competition and compromise privacy. And one last look at the forecast. We're at 80 degrees right now. You see the radar. Things still pretty quiet. We're going to see a, a pretty quiet afternoon. Temperatures into the triple digits, though, this weekend. Be safe. Stay cool. All right, thanks, Justin. Before we go, we got to tell you about this. So if you've been on the Internet at all during this pandemic, <laughs> you have found that uh, baking bread has become a thing for a lot of people. I didn't know that. I until don't this. know why. Have you guys picked up baking bread? No. Uh, TikTok says you should be baking sourdough <laughs> oh. bread, apparently. Well, if TikTok so, says it. Yeah, of course, right? Must be. Well, King Arthur Flour Company, they apparently have a baking hotline. You can call in and ask questions. They've gotten some doozies during this mm -hmm. pandemic. They've gotten 45,000 chats, emails, and calls over this. Uh, some great ones, too. Um, they wanted, for instance, everybody and their mother wanted to start a sourdough starter from scratch. Justin, I know you're a part of this. Yeah, of so some crazy related questions. Uh, is it safe to use flour after saturating the bag in disinfectant? Yes, that is a question <laughs> that they actually got. Somebody else mm. asked, if they prepared cookie dough with latex gloves, is someone with a latex allergy able to eat it? Hmm. So how do you respond <laughs> to these questions? Um, apparently, people have been advised to use your best judgment and don't use the flour if it smells like disinfectant. Mm. I would also yeah. say maybe soaking it is probably a misstep. I, I don't. I don't bake. I, we, I was reading this and I was first like, you know. First step is don't soak your flour in chemicals. Yeah, <laughs> okay. First things first. <laughs> yes. So uh, lots of information out there on mm -hmm. sourdough bread baking right now. Just head to TikTok. Taking notes. Head to, head to TikTok like right. the rest of America. <laughs> Thanks for joining us.